This is our third session of the day. Uh, it is the effects of human diets on environmental processes. And we have three very talented speakers across very different fields. So I'm excited to see how their work intersects with each other and the rest of the program today. So first up, we have Dr. Selena Ahmed. She's an assistant professor of sustainable food systems and principal investigator of the agroecology and ethnobotany group of the Food and Health Lab at Montana State University. Selena? Excellent, it's a pleasure to be here. Can you all hear me? Excellent. Um, so as we've been talking throughout today's symposium, a key challenge of our times is addressing and meeting healthy diets that are also delicious while supporting environmental well-being. And contributing to this food system challenge contributes to addressing multiple sustainable development goals of the United Nations. This includes sustainable development goal number two, zero hunger, goal three, good health and well-being, Goal 12, responsible consumption and production, and goal 13, climate action. On the human health side of the food system, poor diets are a leading risk factor of the global burden of disease, with every country in the world impacted by malnutrition, which includes undernutrition, overweight, and obesity. In the past decade, there's been a notable increase in the global prevalence of obesity, and while overall as a global population, while we're eating more calories, as has been highlighted previously today and yesterday, um, we're not meeting dietary recommendations, specifically in regards to those healthy and sustainable foods, such as fresh fruits and vegetables. Um, and then on the environmental side of the food system, food production places greater stress on ecosystems than any other human activity. Um, this includes land use change, disruptions to habitat, disruptions to ecosystem services, loss of biological diversity, agricultural leaching and runoff that results in soil and water pollution, as well as greenhouse gas emissions. However, not everything that we eat has equal impact on the environment and that's why focusing on diets and food is so critical. For example, looking at the greenhouse gas emissions of plant-based proteins such as lentils and beans is notably less than, than animal-based proteins such as from beef and lamb. And while food production impacts or is disrupting ecosystem services, we also can't produce food without these ecosystem services, such as pollination and nutrient cycling. Um, and so my previous research has showed that not all the ways that we grow food impacts ecosystem services and human health the same way. Um, this is a slide that I actually presented almost a decade ago in this room through research that was supported through a Botany in Action Fellowship here in Phipps Conservatory where I looked at the environmental impacts of and management impacts of tea grown in a diversified organic agroforest versus a monoculture plantation that requires um, agrochemical input. And we found that the agroforest contributes to um, conserving biological diversity as well as sequestering carbon sequestration. And um, the output, the crops from that system, also has significantly higher levels of um, phytochemical content, specifically the antioxidant polyphenols or catechins. And while uh, much of the planet or a notable um, portion of the planet still struggles with food insecurity, including in low-income communities in the United States, much of what is produced is wasted and a lot of this food waste is occurring or the majority of this food waste is occurring at the consumer level. So again, really thinking about the role of consumers in supporting sustainable food systems. Um, and all of these food system challenges are exasperated by climate change and global change overall. Um, there's numerous research that has been shown that crop yields are declining in many parts of the world due to um, climate variability. In some parts of the world, some crop crops are increasing because of climate change, but they actually may then reach their crop thresholds.
And it's not only crop yields that are um, changing with climate change, it is also crop quality. This is research that I've been carrying out with a team across um, the range of maple syrup that's showing that the total phenolic phytochemicals in maple syrup that give maple syrup its health attributes are actually decreasing with an increase in temperatures and these temperatures are uh, forecasted to increase with climate change. Um, and it's not only temperatures that are impacting our crop quality, it is also other variables such as precipitation. This is data that's showing um, from China that I've been collecting that's shown that the monsoon season is getting longer and that's resulting in a decrease in the key phytochemicals that give tea its antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties. Um, however, uh, my research is also identifying that there is um, sustainable diversified agricultural practices that can mitigate the risk of crops to um, climate change um, and specifically tea agroforests can result in tea that has less fluctuations in um, crop quality with climate variability. And so the aforementioned food system challenges and opportunities have led to a need to really focus on supporting sustainable food systems that support both environmental and human well-being from production through consumption through waste. And while the food system is extremely complex and sometimes hard for us as individuals or as consumers to um, tackle, what we can sort of tackle and have full control over multiple times a day is thinking about our food choices through our diets. Um, so sustainable diets are those that are from sustainable food systems that support both ecological and human well-being. And so a lot of research um, and interventions and programs have focused on supporting sustainable diets um, and sort of thinking about the behavioral responses of individuals. Um, however, when we're thinking about supporting sustainable diets, it's not only individual preferences that we need to focus on, it's also the food environment in which we make our food choices. So the food environment is the consumer interface of the food system. This is where we actually interact with the food system on a daily basis and procure our food. And ultimately, the food environment influences the availability, affordability, convenience, and desirability of food. Um, and not all food environments support sustainability. And so a lot of the food choices that we make, let's say we're at a supermarket or at a cafe, they may have both sustainable or less sustainable food choices. However, in many rural, low-income and tribal communities that I'm working in in Montana, the more sustainable choice is not the accessible or desirable choice. Um, and my research in Montana has been showing that notable um, food environment disparities exist based on virality, income, um, with low income tribal and rural communities having less food that is healthy and sustainable being available, affordable, convenient, um, and desirable based on sensory properties of the food as well as phytochemical quality of that food. And a lot of these changes and sort of discrepancies that are happening in the food environment are due to development that has resulted in a food environment transition. So historically, food environments were mostly natural food environments where we procured food um, from wild food resources or cultivated subsistence food resources. And more and more, our food environments are shifting around the world to build food environments where both healthy and unhealthy foods are available. And um, a lot of disparities exist based on communities in access to um, healthy foods. Um, so for example, when I first started working in Yunnan province of China, more than a decade ago, communities relied on their natural food environments um, for, for, for procuring foods, and they also had very low prevalence of diet-related chronic disease. And what we found was that the biodiversity of the natural food environment was directly linked to their dietary diversity, as well as um, lower incidences of diet-related chronic disease. However, over the past few years, I've been documenting how food environments in those communities are changing with more processed and unhealthy foods. 
uh, which is very, very much impacting food choices, specifically for the youngest generations in the community um, and resulting in um, a range of health outcomes. Um, and so here I propose, or our team that's working on this proposes, if we're going to focus on the nutrition transition, it's very critical to think about the food environment transition and the specific food environments that are driving our food choices. Um, so here we see the classic nutrition transition framework merged with a food environment um, transition um, that supports sustainable diets. And so, for example, historically, um, communities were mostly in pattern one where there were hunters and gatherers. And then um, many communities around the world now are in pattern four where there is a prevalence of obesity and diet related chronic disease. And if you want to see a shift in these communities um, towards healthier food systems, it's really critical to think about um, the food environments that are impacting those food choices. And I just wanted to briefly highlight four major trends that have happened um, globally in terms of food environments. And so while there is an increase in the availability of many diversified consumer goods, most of that those foods are coming from a much smaller um, set of biodiversity and plant species. Um, and there's also a higher prevalence in our agricultural fields of um, more crops that support ultra-processed foods. Um, foods are becoming cheaper overall, so um, we're spending less of our income on food and we can buy more foods with our income. At the same time, healthy food um, remains less affordable than unhealthy food. Um, we're also spending more of our income at food away from home, and so the food environment really plays a critical role um, in impacting our food choices. And then um, food desirability, um, which is um, how desirable foods are in the food environment. Marketing very much impacts this, and there's much more marketing towards unhealthy foods, and this is translating to ch food choices and preferences among especially children um, for these unhealthy foods. Um, and so working in um, tribal communities in Montana, there's a few um, aspects that we're trying to modify food environments to support sustainable diets. And um, from the nutrition perspective, we're promoting the transformation of food environments that support plant-based foods, dietary diversity, dietary quality, limits in energy and ultra-processed foods, and safe foods. From the environmental aspect of um, sustainable diets, we're promoting food systems that support biodiversity, ecosystem services, soil health, efficient use of resources, um, and foods that have relatively low greenhouse gas emissions, including local foods. And then on the economic and so the socioeconomic aspect of food systems, we're promoting um, food environments that support local food traditions, um, flavor, foods that support um, local cultural preferences, equity, food environment access, and food sovereignty. Thank you.